are you looking for the system administrator job but you have a lots of confusion related to the question and you are not able to understand about what are the roles and responsibility basically handled by the system administrator so in this video i'm planning to give you complete information a to z information related to the system administrator job profile we'll discuss about what are the technologies that you need to learn to become a system administrator and we'll also discuss about some questions means the the, the most common question that uh, uh, most of interviewer will ask you related to the system administrator job interview i am manjeet rawat your online instructor and you are watching teach me cloud youtube channel teach me cloud is a single technical training based youtube channel that give you 100% live practical based video without a skip any step so let me move ourselves to the screen and guide you the agenda of uh, this particular video and after that we'll proceed for the we'll we'll try to complete all the content according to the agenda so i'm moving myself to the screen and uh, i hope you guys are able to see my screen so agenda is clear like what is voting process this is one of important topic related to the system administrator profile but let me guide you if you really want to become a system administrator right so you must need to prepare yourself in three different technologies yes mandatory you must need to prepare yourself for the three different technologies like as the first and really important part and user computing right and user computing which is also considered as a desktop troubleshooting which is also considered as a desktop troubleshoot right and second important part you also need to prepare yourself for the active directory and server management right this is second important point that you need to know and the third and really important part you also need to know about the basic of networking i'm not saying about that you have a idea that you must need to learn about the routing and switching based on cisco content if you have a basic of networking like local area network you have idea about uh, different types of ip address and range of ip address class of ip address you are able to calculate the usable ip address from uh, any cidr value you have idea about the subnet subnetting so definitely we are able to manage number 4 the really important part as per the market requirement you also need to prepare yourself for the microsoft 365 or you can also say that office 365 these three different common technologies are backbone you can consider these three different or four different technologies are considered as a backbone for every system administrator senior system administrator right so uh, one more point just wanted to add like as a which is not required but if you have idea about these platforms so then definitely it will help you if you know about the azure admin or uh, architect right if you have idea about the azure administrator or architect content then definitely most of client will uh, like as a um like uh, get your resume means they, they they revert back you means they are going to call you if you mention you have idea about the uh, azure administrator or architect you have already mentioned these th two different technologies on your resume then definitely clients going to call you back uh to to for the further discussion right because each and every organization want to hire the engineers who must need to know about at least one cloud technology right so this is these all are the technologies that required in case of uh, clearing the interview based on system administrator so what i am going to do i know it will take time so you can consider this is the type of series that i am going to share with you guys let me start from the very basic end user computing and you need to know about what types of task basically we need to perform in case of end user computing you should know about the uh, roles and responsibility that we need to perform as a desktop troubleshooting engineer the system administrator who have idea about the desktop troubleshooting need to know about the active directory domain service management and also need to know about networking and office 365 and at least one cloud computing let me start from the very basic and user computing or you can say that desktop troubleshooting 
So in case of desktop troubleshooting, although we are responsible to perform lots of tasks, let me help you to understand about what are the activity you need to perform if you hired by some organization and your roles, your, your profile is desktop troubleshooting engineer. So you need to take care of all the things related to the networking, like basic of networking, sharing data, transferring data from one machine to another machine, configuring map network drive, access network printer, and also you must need to know about how to install and uninstall application and software. You need to take care of the drivers that required uh, on any client operating system. So you must need to know about these things. Means all operating system plus uh, uh, application, right? And you also need to know about drivers installation. Right, this is the first point that administ that uh, desktop troubleshoot uh, uh, de desktop troubleshooting engineer must need to know. And second important part, you also need to know about the basic hardware troubleshooting. Right, basic hardware troubleshooting in the sense like uh, system performing very slow. We are getting the BSOD in any desktop. So these types of uh, troubleshooting you need to perform basic hardware troubleshooting like BSOD and slow performance. So these types of issues we are going to resolve in case of desktop. So actually the agenda of this class definitely I am going to cover one topic related to desktop troubleshooting. I am talking about this is the common question asked by most of uh, uh, interviewer in case of technical round of interview they are going to ask you if you are going to if you are applying yourself for the system administrator or senior system administrator job then definitely they are going to ask you question related to the desktop troubleshooting what is booting process right this is really common question that put up by most of interviewer in technical round all right so talk about the booting process so in case of booting process as per the name suggest you know uh, very well about whenever we press start button of any desktop or laptop it will take 10 to 15 seconds to give you the display give you the screen of uh, user id and password so actually in the 10 to 15 minute the backend task happen and this task is considered as a booting process Basically, the booting process is categorized in two different part. One is hard booting or you can say that one is warm booting. Right. And the second is considered as a cold booting. Right. Warm booting and cold booting. Our responsibility, we must need to know about the difference between warm booting and cold booting very basic steps required to understand for example this is your desktop right this is your desktop or system unit you can say that and this is also your system like desktop and we are able to find two different keys or button available on our system unit one is a start button and another is related to the restart restart key right so very basic steps required this is a start key and this one is related to the restart key fine in case of cold booting right whenever we perform the task of cold booting if we if we talk about the work of cold booting whenever we press our system whenever we press the start button of any desktop or laptop it means that system going to start from the scratch which is considered as a cold booting and in this case system must need to follow four different stages of booting process. The first one is uh, uh, you can say that BIOS, the second one is MBR, third one is active partition, right? The third one is active partition and the last one is BCD, boot configuration data, right? four different stages are required to boot our computer to perform the booting process and our responsibility we must need to know about the gap between these four different steps that performed by each and every windows based machine but 
if you are going to perform the warm booting whenever we press the restart key of our system unit or you are going to restart your computer by using software setting like by using the command or by right clicking on a start menu and select the restart icon so it is considered as a warm booting and in the warm booting only two stages required one is active partition and the second one is bcd right these two different steps required to boot our computer in case of warm booting i hope you guys are able to understand about the concept of booting process this is really important and common questions question related to the system administrator job profile let me help you more regarding same like the booting process so it's our responsibility we should know about the work of uh, uh, these four different steps are uh, that required to understand about the booting process so let me help you to understand about the concept of bios the first one is bios second one is mbr third one is active partition right third one is active partition and the last one is related to the bcd boot configuration data so as per the name suggest bios contain two important information like as uh, the first one is contain the information about post the meaning of post power on self test as per the name suggest the responsibility of power on self test whenever we press the start key of any system or laptop uh, power on self test start their task like the responsibility of power on self test it is responsible to check the all components those components are required to turn on our machine the components are it will check ram hard disk motherboard processor power good signal of our psu if everything is okay then definitely post will complete their on task second important options are available like that you need to know types of bios so there are two different types of bios available one is legacy and another is uefi legacy and uefi there are two different types of bios are uh, currently available and huge gap between the legacy and uefi bios i'm going to give you some numbers like the difference between legacy and uh, uefi bios legacy is fully based on cli right means whenever we open the legacy bios it will not allow you to make any changes with the help of mouse means you are able to make any changes under the legacy bios only with the help of keyboard and arrow key or keyboard but if we talk about uefi bios it's a fully based on gui graphical user interface number second it support only mbr disk right it support only mbr disk and the uefi support mbr plus gpt disk both types of disk format are available in uefi bios number third uh, it is it required manual bios update manual bios update if you are trying to update your bios you must need to follow the manual step right but the uefi bios can give us option of automatic bios update means your system must be connected with the internet in a, the bios setting we are able to find one option related to the automatic bios update you just need to select and proceed with next 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 and it will directly download the required or uh, updated uh, files in the bios or for the firmware number next it will not give us uh, any kind of security non secure booting process it's a basically non secure booting process and it will provide secure booting process this is the actual gap between legacy and uefi bios if any interviewer will ask you question related to the same please describe all the things that i mentioned in like as a point wise let's talk about mbr so mbr is a basically master boot required file logical file it is responsible to help us to create or identify partition of 
hard drive. The storage that you are using, it will identify and check the number of partitions that currently available. It will also help us to create a new partition. Active partition, the work of active partition, it is responsible to fetch data or you can say that program file always from disk 0 from disk 0 and partition 1 disk 0 and partition 1. Number next about BCD, it is a boot configuration data, boot configuration data and the work of boot configuration data responsible to contain the all types of local security. The local securities are like registry, it is responsible to contain local GPU, right, and also contain the kind of password policy. So, these information basically contained by the BCD. So, guys, this is the first topic that we completed regarding our system administrator journey and definitely in this particular topic interview will ask you one question and you are able to reply at least what about the booting process, different types of BIOS and about the gap between the legacy and UEFI BIOS. I hope everything is okay. You are good with the content that we completed so far. We will connect soon and discuss more about the content that required to make you system administrator. Do subscribe your on Teach Me Cloud YouTube channel. We will connect in next class. Take care guys. Bye bye.